When it comes to home consoles, there's one name that stands above all. Sony with its PlayStation has defined console gaming, pushing hardware further with each model. Since the beginning of its journey back in 1994, PlayStation has been redesigned, powered up and ultimately evolved to what we know today with PlayStation 4. Before the announcement of its next generation, we revisit the history of PlayStation home consoles in terms of hardware. Ready to remember how it went down through the years? Hi, I'm Wes Malik and today we're discussing the evolution of PlayStation from the classic to PlayStation 4 Pro. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to Segment Next for more videos like this one and hit the notification button to be the first to see our latest uploads. Back in 1994, when PlayStation began its journey, gaming wasn't what it is today. Hardware-wise, the classic PlayStation featured a one-core processor, 2 megabytes of RAM, and a 32-bit GPU with 1 megabyte of VRAM. If you wanted to play a PlayStation 4 title on Sony's first console, you probably would need hundreds of units to be able to. This is huge to think of, even though we're talking about a console that released roughly 25 years ago. It connected to image and sound with RCA, the same ones we used for our VCR devices back then. To put that into perspective, PlayStation was the first console to make a meaningful leap to 3D gaming, something that evolved through the years to what we know today. Fast forwarding six years, we find PlayStation 2, which brought a significant upgrade to what we were used to. The console uses the Emotion Engine CPU with 294.91 MHz and the custom designed graphics synthesizer GPU with a fill rate of 2.4 gigapixels per second. With 8 megabytes of VRAM and 32 megabytes of system RAM, you can already tell that the leap from the first generation to the next one was huge, even though it is nothing compared to what we know today. The console was able to play CD and DVD-ROM and was backwards compatible with PlayStation 1, something that didn't continue as a standard on the latest generation. In addition, the PS2 featured USB ports for the first time and you could add a hard drive via a port on the back or use 8 megabytes capacity PlayStation 2 memory cards. The hard disk drive came in handy at the time since there were games like Final Fantasy XI that basically required additional hard drive space. Last but not least, Sony added thumbsticks to the classic PS1 controller as well as rumble controls, keeping up with the trends of the time. PlayStation 2 defined its generation, counting more than 155 million units worldwide, making it the best-selling console of all times. After the successful life of PlayStation 2, Sony released PlayStation 3, which became a standard in pretty much every gamer house for a huge amount of time. It wouldn't surprise us if fans all over the world still booted their console every once in a while to enjoy a playthrough of the PS3 classics. The classic 60GB HDD version included a Cell Broadband Engine CPU 3.2GHz chip and an RSX GPU. Memory came out at 256MB of RAM and 256 VRAM. Compared to the single processor PlayStation 1 and 2, PS3 had a 7-core processor which totally justifies the huge jump in power. Specs-wise, this is nothing more than technical terms, but at the end of the day, those specs made the difference in console gaming altogether. USB ports are now twice as many as in PlayStation 2, and you can upgrade its capacity with memory sticks, SD cards, compact flash disks, etc. This is the first time a Sony console comes close to a personal computer. Even more since HD video is now available, making connectivity even better with HDMI support. The PlayStation 3 had the ability to play Blu-ray discs and connect to the internet, which was a huge leap for the time. With an online store for the first time and peripherals like the SingStar microphones and the PlayStation Move, PS3 still holds a special place in our hearts even up to this day. Controller-wise, the DualShock 3 featured the same layout as the DualShock 2, but wireless via Bluetooth with the ability to be charged by plugged in on the console via USB. Undeniably, PS3 was the base of what we know today as PlayStation 4. The one difference between the two is the fact that PS3 had the ability of backwards compatibility with PS2 and original PlayStation games. This is something we missed with PlayStation 4. PlayStation 4 released in 2013 for America, becoming everyone's sweetheart up to this day. 
being the best-selling console of this generation. PlayStation 4 and its successor PS4 Pro brought console gaming breath close to PC gaming. Hardware-wise, the PS4 uses an accelerated processing unit developed by AMD and also contains 8 GB of GDDR5 memory, which is 16 times the amount of RAM found in the PS3. The classic console includes a 500GB hard drive for additional storage, which can be upgraded to your liking up to 8 terabytes. Needless to say that the console is able to play pretty much every current high-end title even though it's close to its life cycle. The DualShock 4 controller is the ultimate form of the Sony's gamepads up to date, being extremely comfortable with wireless connectivity, touch controls and the ability to plug in headphones and a microphone on it. When the PlayStation 5 gets announced, we can't wait to see how they'll manage to make a better DualShock controller than that one. With all that being said, is everyone ready for the day Sony announces PlayStation 5? The company has always strived for an upgrade and managed to shape things up in an ever-changing industry all these years. What would you want to see from PlayStation 5? What was your favorite Sony console and why? Let us know in the comments below and I'll talk to you in the next video.